Hey everyone, and today I have for you a humongous book haul. I have here over 30 books. And hopefully this will be the biggest book haul I ever do for a very long time because this is an insane amount of books for me. I went to this really big library book sale and it was basically fill a bag for five dollars and I go really nuts at those kind of sales because they're just like amazing. <laughs> so I have 33 novels and then I've got some extra little books that I'm going to use for crafts to cut the pictures out of and stuff like that. So I have organized everything into some piles and I'm going to attempt to show you all of them within a timely manner. So I just want to give you a look at these books before I organize and go through them. I've got two grocery bags full. They're so heavy I am so surprised they didn't break. Those handles didn't break while I was there. But yeah, that is what they look like pre-organizing, counting, and going through them. To begin with, I'm going to start with the books I'm going to be using for crafts. First here, it doesn't have a dust jacket or anything, but it is really pretty, this color green, and the spine is so pretty. And there's some illustrations right in here. And I figured I would use this book for making a new journal. And then I have one more like that. This is also a nice color, nice sturdiness, and it's got a really pretty spine. I sent a picture of to my mom just because I thought it was funny. And she's like, get it. I'm like, for real? So it is Boys Are Yucko by Anna Gross Nickel Hines. So I'll, I'll be giving that to her. It's hilarious, oh my god. I then got this Wildflowers book to cut the pictures out of. It is full of illustrations of wildflowers and this would be perfect for collages and scrapbooking and all that good fun stuff that I like to do. And then finally, this beast is the home planet which is filled with awesome cool pictures of Earth from space. I'm gonna be tearing some of these pages out and putting them on my wall to inspire me because I just love space. Oh. Where the heck did I put it? And then I was hoping to find more audiobooks there, but I guess people snatched them up over the weekend. So I did end up finding one and it is Green by Ted Decker. I don't know much about it. I think it's a sci-fi kind of book. I read something by Ted Decker and I really enjoyed it, so I thought I would give this a shot since it was practically free. There's like 11 CDs in this thing. Four novels, two worlds, one story. Should have just started with that. Definitely going to be listening to this like in the car when I go on drives and stuff. Now on to the actual novels. Let me also say that when you're in a store and it's full of tables, full of books, and you're like dragging these heavy bags around and there are so many books for five dollars a bag you kind of push the limits of what you would normally pick up you start to think you know maybe i would enjoy this and if i don't like it then i'll just donate them or something like that but for that low price it's like why not just pick up some books hey i'm i'm, I'm, I'm excited have them separated into these sort of categories so i'm just gonna go ahead and get started with my mass market paperbacks. Divine Evil by Nora Roberts. I don't know much about this. The cover is really cool. And I know Nora Roberts does kind of like romancy stuff, but this is also kind of a um, darker. I've been meaning to check out some of Nora Roberts' works because I know she has like a majillion of them. The Shining by Stephen King, one of those that I watched the movie and I really loved, and I thought I would pick up the book because I think it will be really good and I'm very excited to read this. Then I've got my growing collection of these old mass market paperbacks of the Lord of the Rings series. I've picked up The Hobbit and the first book at like yard sales and stuff and so I found the second book there, The Two Towers, and I picked it up. Awesome. I have heard of this author. It is Patricia Briggs and this is Moon Called. A Mercy Thomas novel. This girl looks like a freaking badass. It's mostly why I got it. Urban fantasy, I guess you would call it. Werewolves, witches, shaped shifters, vampires, all that fun stuff. Look, oh, sounds really neat. Then I've got a classic, which is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have this on ebook, but I figured why not just pick up a hard copy of it while it is there. And next I've got this giant 
collection. I've, I'm now starting a collection of V.C. Andrews books. And if you've seen one of my other videos, I talked about V.C. Andrews and how she has only written, I think, seven books in her life. And since her death, a ghostwriter has been writing under her name tons and tons and tons of books. So I have a stack here of, I think, one she actually wrote. Maybe two, I'm not sure. But when I saw them, I was like, yes, I'll pick those up no matter what because I've also been meaning to read both of the ones that she actually wrote and her ghostwriter wrote so that I can kind of compare the two and see how they stand. So I've got Hidden Jewel, which the cover is ripped, but that's totally fine. <laughs> this is the fourth novel in the Landry series. She definitely did not write this one. I also thought I would just pick up these old covers while I can because they are very expensive online for some reason. Rain, which is a really cool cover. I like it a lot. I love these covers. They're so, like, cheesy. I love this part, like, the colors, and then inside is, like, a whole family. This is the first novel in the Hudson series, so I can read this right away. This is definitely one she has did not write. I have The Storm, which is the third novel in the Hudson series. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this, like, ventriloquist thing. Oh my god, it's so good. I love it. Fallen Hearts. This is story of the Castile family. I'm not sure which one it is. She didn't write this one either. Oh, this is one of my favorite covers, so look at this. Look at that guy! I take it back. This is my favorite cover. Twilight's Child, the Cutler series, continues, and it's kind of textured here, and then look at this. Check it out. That one, and then finally I've got one she actually wrote, which is Heaven. The dust jacket did not come on it, but I was like, I don't care because this is one she actually wrote and it's the first in the series and I definitely want to read it. Um, I think one of these is actually the second book or another book in the series but I'm not sure which one because there's just so many. Now I've got some adult hardcover and softcover. It's a combination of sci-fi and fiction I believe. start off I've got The Joy Club by Amy Tan which I saw in Goodwill at one point and considered getting it, but since it was there, I was like, yeah, I'll get it. Switches back and forth between the lives of four Chinese women in pre-1949 China and then the lives of their American-born daughters in California. So that sounds really cool. Going on the Chinese thing, I picked up Snowflower and the Secret Fan. I feel like this was made into a movie that I started watching, but I'm not sure. It takes place in 19th century China, having to endure the agony of foot binding and arranged marriages and all that stuff. I then have a classic, Free Fall by William Golding. William Golding wrote The Lord of the Flies, which I read. It's about an artist who gets locked in a cell and just stuff, 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 stuff. It, sound, it just sounds really cool. Next, I have Pandemonium by Daryl Gregory. And this sounds really cool. In the 1950s, ordinary men, women, and children start getting possessed by entities that people are calling demons, so that sounds so cool. Woo! Okay, next I've got here The Air We Breathe by Krista Parrish. Really pretty cover, that's why I picked it up. And it is about a 17-year-old who does not go outside because she's got such bad anxiety. And then this woman she used to know shows up and they have a unique friendship. I really like that this is not about a girl who's inside and then meets a boy and the boy changes her life. So I think it's really cool and I'm really interested in this kind of a story. Next we have The Brides of Farewell by Meg Rosoff. I recently picked up How I Live Now by her. This is an adult book I believe and I'm not even sure what it's about. Whoever decided to print a brown on a black, I could not even hardly read what it's about. I was just like, well, it's really pretty and it's Meg Rosoff, so I thought I would just try it out anyway. A Graveyard for a Lunatics by Ray Bradbury. Not sure exactly what this is about, but it's Ray Bradbury. Hollywood in the 1950s, transformed into the world of wonder by the classic Bradbury magic. What else do I need to know, really? And next, I've got two copies of She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb because this is another one I saw at Goodwill and wanted to pick up, but I wasn't sure. So I saw it there and I was like, yes, I'll pick it up. They had several different, like, editions of it, but it sounds really neat. And I figured it would be one my mom might like, too, so we could buddy read it. That's why I got two, because buddy reading, yes. Asylum by Patrick McGrath. And then the wife gets murdered eventually. I think someone gets murdered. But it's called Asylum and it was there. I picked up an Alice Walker book and I was like, no. 
you have like at least five Alice Walker books that you haven't read yet. You keep picking them up because you like the color purple and so you keep getting her books and haven't read them and I was like, okay, I can just bypass this one. Walk a little further, see another one. It's gorgeous. So I picked it up and it is by the light of my father's smile. Not sure what this is about. And it's just gorgeous. And look at this. Look how beautiful she is. Ah, oh, love this whole thing. Love it. Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. Um, I've been meaning to pick up some of her work because I've heard really, really great things about it. It's a sci-fi thing and look how cool that is. It's so cool. I'm not really sure what this is about. I saw Margaret Atwood and I was like, yes. The Monsters of Templeton by Lauren Groff. And look how pretty this is. I mean, honestly, I was like, should I get this? Shouldn't I get it? I put it down and I'm like, it's so beautiful. And it's kind of a historical fiction mixed with a ghost story. That sounds neat. Scar Knight by Alan Campbell. This is an arc from 2006. How cool is that? But it's basically just about like angels and stuff. And look how freaking awesome this cover is. So I got it. Now we're going on to my young adult pile. It's a much smaller than the other piles because a lot of the young adult books there, hinting on middle grade, Roxy by PJ Reese. Roxy came to Greece to stand at the deathbed of her grandfather that she never met. She falls in love, blah, blah, blah. Things turn out differently, tragic love story. Really cool cover. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. I watched this movie with my sister and it was really, really spectacular. So I thought I would give the book a shot because I've actually been considering getting this and there it was, so I got it. Royal Blood by Ellen Schreiber and this is the sixth book in the Vampire Kisses series. I have one, two, three, four, five of the books in this series and of course six happens to be there. And this is a really pretty cover. I have like these weird mass market paperback covers and I don't even know if I'll actually like the series anymore but in case I do want to pick it up again, I've got the sixth book. So be it by Sarah Weeks, which I used to see in the Scholastic Book Orders when I was a kid, and I always kind of wanted it, but I wasn't really into reading fiction at the time. I was into more fantasy and books about dogs. Next, I've got Frostbite by Mich- Every time, every time. Next, I have Frostbite by Rochelle Mead. I recently bought the box set of the Vampire Academy series. Haven't read it yet, and for some reason, I thought I would just pick up a double copy of Frostbite. I really love these cheesy covers. I just really love them. Going Bovine by Libba Bray. I don't really know much about this other than Libba Bray. Kid in high school, band, video games, stuff, so. Boy Meets Boy by David Levithan. I saw this and I was like, Boy Meets Boy, cool. A gay YA story. Gay YA, <laughs> sounds cool. And I was like, oh, it's David Levithan. I haven't read any of his stuff, but everyone says it's pretty good, so I definitely got it. An ARC copy of Deep Blue by Jennifer Donnelly, which is the first in a series about mermaids. There's no way I can pick up all of these books to show you. There is no way. I would probably die or be covered in books and then die. Okay, this is not all of them. <laughs> I had so much fun at this book sale. It was freaking crazy. I went in there like $10 in my pocket, $5 a bag. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to just get one bag. Not even a third of the way through. I'm like, I need another bag because it was just way too heavy. And I was sure the bags would rip and it didn't rip. Luckily, thank you. Thank you bags for not ripping. Over 30 books for $10. I live for these kind of book sales. There's no limits. It's almost like free books because it's like $5 and you can get as many books that will fit in this bag as possible. As many books as you can possibly carry in that bag. So I went nuts, as you could see. I may or may not go back tomorrow when everything is free. That is it for this haul. I hope you enjoyed it. It was massive and I'm so excited and overwhelmed at the amount of books I have to read now. They literally cannot fit on my shelves anymore. I really need a new bookshelf, but there's absolutely no room left in my room for another bookshelf, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next. Bye!